What's up, what's up, what's up everyone? It is Jason Janai and welcome back to my channel. I am grateful that you are here and in this video, I wanna take you through some of my newly set up programs, shows, presets, and live edits using my WMX1 lighting controller, standalone lighting controller by ADJ, as well as Wolf Mix. For those of you that are new to the channel or haven't seen any of my other videos using this controller or about this controller, I actually stumbled on this controller not too long ago and absolutely fell in love with it. Over the past week, I've been obsessed with learning how I can use it, how I can replace what I feel is my outdated Chave Show Express software platform, computer base, and lighting control system, and I've now done it with this controller. This controller is super robust, and at first glance, I really didn't think it was gonna work for me, but after using it on real events and getting to learn how to program it and reprogram it, I've learned quite a bit, and I've been able to adapt my fixtures and my lighting to be used with this. And I'm so excited about this because it's super easy, super fun to use. And I could use it myself when I'm DJing. I can give it to one of my lighting support people when I'm DJing, or I could actually have two of them linked together and we both could be doing lighting at one of my events, which I just think is super cool. Now, this controller has a lot of options and it's got a lot of different stuff. If you're not familiar with this controller, again, I'm gonna put some links in the description of this video, some of my other videos here on this channel, as well as information if you're interested in getting one of these things. In addition to that, I'm gonna put some links in the description to some of the other equipment that I'm using here. And if you're interested on the tech specs, the information, any of it, you can actually check out the equipment links in the description of this video at any time. Now, if you like the footage here, if you like the video, if you have questions, you're welcome to smash the thumbs up at any time. You're also welcome to drop in the comments portion of this video at any time and ask away. I'm sharing this, trying to pay it forward, trying to help people out with some questions that I've gotten over time about how I design my lighting, how I use my lighting and, and what exactly we do. A lot of people see some of these videos that we share here from my events and they ask a lot of questions about my lighting. So I reprogrammed this thing yesterday. I spent a ton of time doing it. We're here in my warehouse. I've got the haze going so you can see everything going on and I wanna walk you through it. now. I'm pretty psyched to be able to do this with you guys, and I can do this using a mobile setup here. I've actually got my WMX1 controller right here, powered by a Jackery. Not only that, but I'm also powering two different DMX transmitters to the different fixtures that I have because they use different technology, and I've got everything working. I love the Jackery. I've got a video on that on this channel as well, and I'm gonna put some links, all the stuff, and everything over there in the description of this video. So. I wanna stop and kind of talk about how I use lighting at an event. Now, lighting to me is something that influences the overall atmosphere. And I think it's just as important as flowers for many reasons at events, especially events like weddings, like the decor, the look. Lighting can be used as a powerful tool to help enhance the overall music experience and presentation. And I think anyone that's dialed into lighting understands that. If you are someone that's newer to DMX, I'm proud to say that this controller can help you bypass and sidestep some of the extended like learning lessons that are needed to be understood before you actually can operate these fixtures. This controller comes built in with a lot of macros and almost like shortcuts, I don't wanna say shortcuts, but almost like things that have already been thought of and built in, which I think are absolutely incredible and brilliant for this controller. You can add additional fixtures in the future. You can adjust shows on the fly. You can even press play on a preset menu and have the actual controller go from show to show after a designated amount of time that you decide fading in between, you know, preset one, preset two, preset three, preset four, and an entire page of 20 presets, which will help make your lighting life a lot easier, especially when your party takes off. An example is if you play a song every minute, let's just say, set your light shows to essentially change every minute. And now I understand that's very elementary in terms of description, but I think you understand where I'm going with this. This controller allows you to do a lot. It also allows you to link 
multiple controllers together so that if you have a second lighting booth or DJ booth or area where your team is operating, you can link two controllers together. And as you're DJing, you could be operating your lighting, but so can someone else right next to you, which I think is super powerful. You can also add slider control. Some people have talked a little bit about DMX sliders. This controller allows you to do that. And I just think it's super cool. So I set everything up here on a road case and I have it completely mobile. And I think the point of me doing that is so that I can pull things back and experience what the lighting looks like from the DJ side looking forward. But at the same time, or right after that, I can turn it around, bring things over here and simulate what it would look like if I was on the dance floor or I was a guest at an event. Now, my warehouse here is just about like 4,000 square feet and we've got about 26 foot high ceilings. It's kind of like the twilight hour here at SCE. It's just about getting dark. We've got some light haze pumping every so often into the room so you can see the actual beams. And I just wanna walk through some really, really important shows that I think are super helpful for events and for DJs. So first and foremost, you need to have a park show. I think this is something that a lot of DJs don't do. And a park show for me is like something that goes immediately over or straight up in the air if you're using totems, where the lights are parked on the ceiling above the DJ booth. I use this sometimes when an event's over, or I use this if maybe we have to find something, or I do this if there's like a big impact moment. Now, this is just a basic I think generic setup pattern. And I did a video about how I first started programming. If you haven't seen that, I'm gonna put a link to it in the description and again over here where you can kind of see how I started my programming sequence. Now I'm gonna talk about the actual shows. So like a big part of what we do here at SCE is weddings. So I love to have a very wide blown out, perfectly white, completely out of focus wash style first dance show. I also have a show like this that has a more focused gobo, which allows me to tighten things up. But I like to use very blown out shows just like this, because I feel like if a couple is dancing on a dance floor, I will always be hitting them with light from at least one side, which I think looks really good. The other thing too, is like if you're using cold sparks and stuff like that, and they're over that way, sometimes it's hard to have both things going off at the same time. So you might want to like dim them down. Having this show is really, really really something that is almost like the first show that I always program anytime I do lights. Another thing that I like to do too is when I first open up the dance floor, sometimes we shift that to a very slow color roll or color scroll. And you can see that happening behind me. The fixtures didn't move at all. We just are going through a slow roll of the, I guess the color options or color mixing of these lights, super smooth. You don't see a color wheel in between every color fade. And I think that this is a great, pattern, not only for open dancing, but for slow dances. And again, these are right now full throttle all the way up, but in a real life scenario, I probably would dial them back. Now, in addition to that, we've got what I call a scrape roll. This is a lighting show that I think I have to actually take this a different direction, but this is actually a rolling gobo that goes up across the top scrape of the ceiling. And this is adjusted every time I go and do an event. I think that's a really good one to have. We have an open scrape, which is essentially an open gobo. So I tried to come up with terms for things. So like if I was to look down at it, it would be easy for me to understand. I think that's a programming key with this controller. You need to be able to understand what it is very quickly so that you understand what's in the actual preset button or what's on the preset button. Now, the first set of presets that I did is are really mainly white. And I did that with intention and purpose outside of my rainbow kind of color wash of the dance floor because white is always a great pattern for a lot of events for us at SCE. And it's probably the most commonly used color in the whole universe of colors that we use with movers, at least in the beginning of certain events. I think it's cool because it's a big impact thing as well. Now, this controller has a lot of stuff built into it. I'm trying to say like, I've got like scrape patterns that are, that are more towards the dance floor, dance floor, um, let me see if I can do that. This is more like a dance floor scrape. So this is the same pattern that I actually had going up on the ceiling and you might not be able to tell perfectly in this video, but the gobos are in focus, they're rolling through it, and it's actually looking like it's almost like an iris style effect, except 
we're just scrolling the gobo wheel very, very slow. And I love the way that this always looks at a party. I think it looks really cool, especially if you're able to use haze. This is one of my favorite shows to do. Now we've got a couple other shows that are like macros, like the up down sequence of movements, which is a big, big thing here in this controller. I like the movement macros. This is an example of one. Let me see what another one is. This is a, a different macro that they have with the beam effects using a different movement where the lights are actually doing almost like a, a circle style effect. There's a lot of really cool stuff. Some things that I think are important is when you're programming lights, think about how you're gonna be using it at an event. I don't like to time my lighting to beats per minute. I know a lot of people do that. I don't like to do that. I like my lighting to look almost cohesive and I like to control my lights and push my lights to do things that are in time with the music when it makes sense, but also things like this, shows like this look really, really stunning if you're in the right room and of course in your in the right environment where you can use haze and there might be some 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 candle kind of stuff in the air. It really looks brilliant. Outside of that, I've got a couple other like top down and scrolling patterns. This is another movement that was isolated really for the top portion that it's almost not gonna hit the dance floor. It's gonna hit above the dance floor. I think it's very helpful. There's a couple more options of this with opening the iris and opening the gobo um, focus up with these lights. And again, these lights are super powerful. Another, oh, I thought it was pretty cool. Just some different color patterns, color color movements. You see it's blue and it goes into pink. We have another one that's red and purple or red and blue. On preset page two, I spent a lot of time doing more impact style stuff. So this is a little bit more color. So my first page are like the necessities. That's what I'm using most of the time, especially in the beginning of a wedding, beginning of a party. It's my spotlights, it's my, the things I'm always gonna call on. Page two is more about impact. It's more about setting a vibe. It's more about giving me options of things to do during the party side. And I've went through and I've done a number of different movements that span the dance floor, that span beyond the dance floor, that highlight the ceiling and the top of the room. I've really spent a lot of time trying to put things together so that it looks really, really cool when you're at a party of mine. You can see like different movements, different colors, different options a beam show that kind of holds off and this one's just kind of chilling out. It's a little bit slower, but kind of cool, whatever. I programmed it yesterday. I might fix something like this because I don't know if this really hits the way I want it to. This is another one, dots all over the place going up and down. Very, very broad, very, very big. It looks pretty cool. A lot of these movements are kind of all over the place and there's a lot of different ones. Again, this is a different gobo roll. This is another fixture here. This is another focus fixture where we have stuff rolling on the dance floor. These are different beam shows. We have a lot of different things that I've programmed in here to kind of create different effects so that my events are so on point. The cool thing about this controller is you can actually set it up to play one after the other. So if I hit play, it's gonna run this show for 20 seconds and then it's gonna fade from this show right here to the next one and you'll see that happen in just a second. Let me see where we're at. 10, 11, the controller actually tells you where it's at in time so you know how much longer is left. And I think that's super cool. Cool, move to this one now. Let's see where we go from here. This is setting up a play of the page and it's just moving around kind of random. This is number two. Let's see where we're at. So we're at, so this right here is at, now it's moving to the next one. Let's see where it is. Three, four, five, it switch over this one now. So it's, it's actually moving through the list across. Now there's 20 presets on this page, so they're set up to change essentially every 20 to 30 seconds depending on the show. So it will look like you're doing a lot of stuff on site and you might have it just automated running. Now it's doing some cool looking scroll. The next pattern is gonna be, let's see, one, two, three, and this is a little bit different of a scroll, different colors, different patterns. Again, I think it's pretty cool. Another thing that I did on this is I actually set up a couple other pages worth of content. This is different colors, different gobos, different layers, which I think is pretty cool. So let me stop right there. Page one are all my necessities, the essentials, the things that I need to do, calling out, focus on different areas, entrance patterns, kind of like floor starters or party starters. Page two is more 
animated shows. It's more for like party time. Page three, I actually programmed a whole separate page. And what I did on this page is I tied my up lights into the top fixture. So every color sequence here on this page is going to be dialed in both on the movers and the up lights. Now, I didn't do this for all of my shows, and the reason is because sometimes I work for a couple that wants the room to be entirely amber or maybe a white diode, but at like 20% fullness in terms of intensity, the dimmer set way down. And I did it this way so that I have a set of shows that allows me to program these lights, especially later on the night when I want everything to move at once. And I'll show you what that kind of looks like if you just give me a second here. Yeah, so if you see this is pink and white, now the up lights are alternating pink and white as well as the fixtures and they're all doing it at the same time so it looks super uniform. Now, you could imagine what this would look like in a ballroom with 200 plus people on a dance floor and you know, 50 of these up lights around a room, it would look insane. Now I've got this for a number of different things. This is like an orange and a red. This is a couple different types of, of purples and blues. We've got some, uh, a, 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 what is this? A red and a white or a yellow and a white. The cool thing about this controller is it actually gives you the color diode for the show on it as well. So you see this is like a reddish pink and white, which is really, really cool but it shows you here the color palette as well. So page three for me is really about tying in my movers and up lights for maximum impact. And I'm gonna use this like later on in a party. Page four, I didn't get to yet. I'm saving that for my Asteras and tying all of that stuff in. And then um, let me just go back to my page one where I can base this out for a second. And my presets on page five are essentially only up light colors. So I have everything kind of moving around just for that. And you can manipulate this stuff on the fly. I just wanted to set up a couple of color combos that I know I use frequently, depending on the venues or the events that I have, just slow fades and some stuff that's super kind of usable for me, like the amber and white yellow kind of fade combination. It's a very popular one for me, especially later on in the night. I might have it amber or yellow or even white early on in the night all the way through dinner but when the party really lifts off i might switch it over to this so i stay within the color palette but i change things around and i i think that gives you a little bit of an explanation as well as some footage as to how i'm using these lights what it even looks like and i hope this was helpful to you for you and for your events your lighting programming and all the things in the future so that's not it Presets are not the only way to use this controller, and there's a lot of presets. You actually have eight total banks of 20 presets that you can preload, preset up, and just use on your events. If you wanna further enhance the lighting look, maybe the effects, or the show that you are operating with this controller, you actually have the opportunity of using live edits. Live edits are essentially overlays that allow you to further enhance an existing preset. And you can designate what happens during a live edit in the live edit editor here on this controller. You have the ability of picking fixtures individually and then adjusting any one of the DMX channels you choose and then saving that in the live edit screen. Now, these moving heads are super complex in terms of ability. There's 29 channels, which is a lot of channels. And some of the things that I stored in my live editor for these movers are different gobo options, different prism options, different prism rotation options, as well as focus options and some advanced color scrolls that are available with this controller. That's not it. I've even put in some additional buttons for iris and different effects in terms of how the light looks and what the light's doing. I created a very tight beam live edit button. I created a tight spot, a medium spot, a very wide spot, and a full-on wash because 
by default, this controller operates with the beam first. So I had to go into the live editor and set up all of these other various options that are available to me. Some advanced color mixing in this controller has to be done in the live edit screen as well. And there's no problem with that. You just have to understand your fixtures. You have to understand what you are thinking you want the lights to do. And then you have to go in and create some additional scenes and that can all be found in the live edit field. Now, in the live edit field of options, you only get a total of 40 buttons, so you really have to think through what you need, how you're gonna be using your lights, and what you're asking this controller to essentially override. When you select that, the live editor essentially allows you to enhance a show that's existing with some additional features and deeper features of the light and of the control platform. Now, one of the things that I wanna share with you is a lesson that I learned here doing the programming myself. I didn't know how I could differentiate groups when I was using my presets, meaning if I had presets built just for my up lights and I activated presets that were only for my moving heads, I was running into an issue as to how to even handle this. So let me walk you through the workaround on how this can operate, allowing you total control over fixtures when changing the presets if you have multiple layers moving simultaneously where you don't want things to be impacted or adjusted. And I'm gonna talk about the movers and the up lights in this case. Now my movers are on group A and my up lights are on group D. Now what you can do is hold down the shift button and essentially lock a group. That allows you to lock the fixtures in place so that as you're moving through other presets that don't have predefined I guess, options or DMX programming in them, it keeps the fixtures locked. Now, why would you wanna do this? Well, let's just say you're doing a wedding and you have the room that needs to be amber all night long, but you need to access all these different programs that don't have amber programmed into them because you don't wanna sit and go through every single program when you're on site at an event. So what do you do? Well, it's pretty simple. You select your color, you then lock the group so it doesn't change, and then you're able to activate and change all of the movers in group A independently of the fixtures in group D, which are the up lights. And I'll just show you an example of that using the up lights. And I'm gonna select, uh, let's say I wanna select all the up lights and let's do, let me get all of them done here. Let's get color effects off. Let me do a color. Let's put them all on. I'm gonna keep the up lights on red. I'm gonna go back to home. I'm gonna now lock them. Now I'm gonna go through my presets. I'm changing my presets that do not have any up lighting in them, but the up lights are locked. And that allows me a lot of control. Now I can go through and set up in the home screen things that I want the up lights to do. Like if I just wanted it to be, let's say using the color effects, if I wanted it to do a a color fade and I wanted it to be, let's see, red and maybe white. And I'm gonna fade them back and forth and I'm doing this all live. So I'm gonna slow it way down so it's nice and crispy looking. I'm gonna keep them so they're all working together. So I'm gonna take them out of phase, putting them all at the same time. So they're all gonna be fading together. And then what I can do is go to my, uh, my home screen and I can lock the up light so they're gonna stay doing this so you don't have to do anything in the future. And then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna shift different patterns so you see. Sorry, I hit that one. So there you have it. You have your red up lights with your movers and they're all independent of one another. So we can go over to presets that have everything in and I still can use them and it's not gonna override it until I release it by going back, pressing shift, pushing down on the knob for that group and that releases the fixture. So if I go now to a page that has lighting programs with movers and up lights and I hit something, 
you can see they've already changed off of red and now they're in line with the movers. I think that's super cool and super helpful. And um, I know it's getting a little bit darker here because we're in the point of, of it getting dark here at SCE, but I hope this helps you out and I hope that you found value in this video. Now, if you have questions on the WMX1, any of the equipment or gear that I'm using, I'd love to invite you to drop into the comments underneath this video and share them there. I'll do my best to answer anything and everything I can. There's a ton of people that are already using this controller and some of the other controllers that are on the market. And I think together we can all grow by sharing information, sharing stories and sharing information just like this. I hope you found value in it and uh, look forward to seeing you guys in some future videos here on this channel with me using all of these lights at some real deal events starting this coming weekend that I'm so excited about. Anyway, this controller, all information on all of it will be in the description field underneath this video. And I hope to see you guys in the future real soon. Thank you once again for watching and uh, we'll see ya.